Hey, good morning, you guys. It's Jeffrey Howells Carpet Cleaning here, and we've got ourselves, uh, I think, three bedrooms, a hallway, a stairway, a couch, and an area rug to clean up here today. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to begin with our pre-vacuum. I know a uh, conversation going on uh, you Facebook whether or not um, a timely uh, very time consuming vacuum is required when you're using a CRB machine. What a CRB machine is, is man, or mechanical agitation. And it does lift lint and matted hair up out of the carpeting. However, when you're talking about um, accumulated debris, abrasive debris that actually damages carpets, um, when they're in the carpet and they become, they w are walked upon, it causes extra tearing and friction and stuff. And that is debris that the CRB does not or is not capable of removing from the carpet. So, I mean, it pulls up some, but it's not... Cause see, what the vacuum cleaner does is you have a good beater bar under there and you're vibrating the carpets and you're bouncing all of that debris up out of the carpet. And the suction from the motor actually picks all that debris up. Um, that is, see, a CRB has no suction. It's just beating the carpet um, very gently. It's not beating it hard or anything. And it's not really causing any vibration. And the, the, the agitation and the mechanics of it, the physics, are completely different from a vacuum cleaner. So um, you can't justify one or the over the other um so with that said i hope that makes a little bit more sense because really what you're doing when you're leaving a bunch of dirt and stuff in the carpet is that it's all just turning to mud during the steam cleaning process and that's something we really don't want to do because this vacuum cleaner is getting out 79 percent of that debris if not more um, just because it, this vacuum cleaner is a lot more thorough and a bit stronger than typical um, vacuum cleaners used to vacuum carpets. So um, I say 79% is probably about the average range because um, the CRC, I, I CRC has to um, accommodate for hundreds of different vacuum cleaners and all that stuff. So they're pretty much just throwing out an average um, with a high-end vacuum cleaner, you're probably going to be pushing more into the 80 percentile, the 80s somewhere. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go over with the, the vacuum. Yes, it is a timely procedure, but it is very crucial to getting all that debris up out of the carpeting so that the carpets actually become as clean as they possibly can now. When you're leaving stuff like matted hair and debris and all that stuff in the carpeting, that's stuff that your carpet cleaning solutions have to compete with. So you got to think the more debris and junk that's in the carpet, the more it's prohibiting your uh, chemicals from actually penetrating carpet fibers and doing their job. So with that said, um, I know that we're going to be looking around here and seeing what we're doing. And I can already see, without looking around, there's some gum or candy that's in the carpet here. So, um, that's what our pre-spray allows, or our pre-vacuum allows us to do, is just to look over everything. So, you can see there's quite a bit of dirt in here. And we're going to get it all cleaned up, and it's going to look awesome. So, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing our three-phase cleaning procedures. Um, it's going to consist of a pre-vacuum very heavily over everything up here and then it's going to consist of our our, our pre-spray application along with the mechanical agitation with the CRB and then finally we are going to rinse it all off using our powerful truck mounted steam cleaning and um, the carpets are going to be very thoroughly cleaned by the book um, when it comes to a cheap um, inexpensive carpet cleaners any Tom Dick and Harry can clean carpets and call themselves a professional but only a fresh an educated professional that cares about his job is actually gonna um, go through all the proper procedures to make sure everything is done right so um, that includes um, not using inferior cleaning um, solutions I gotta say um, I say this over and over again I tell people um, that cheap cleaning solutions contain lots of residual soap residue and so um, 
your more expensive cleaners, the higher quality ones, um, they're higher quality and they actually they cost more money. That's why the carpet cleaning usually costs more. Um, they don't contain any, very little or no soap residues. So what that does is it allows your carpets to stay cleaner longer. So if you experience uh, quickly resoiling carpets after a cheap carpet cleaning, well, you can bet your bottom dollar that that is due to a cheap cleaning solution that just loaded your carpets up with all kinds of uh, residue. And so now they're just going to get dirty again. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Okay, so we've just completed our pre-vacuum upstairs. We've gone through the, all the rooms and we got everything heavily vacuumed. And I could tell that it was picking up. I could hear it picking up a ton of, of debris out of the carpet. Um, one thing I want to note on, on vacuum cleaners, um, you, you have this height adjustment here. And this is one thing that most people don't get right. Um, when concerning your carpets, because I've seen people, you know, a homeowners that do have a, a Kirby or something like that, what they, they typically end up doing because it's in, kind of intuitive in nature and that makes sense, or it seems like it makes sense, is that they lower the vacuum to the lowest setting, thinking that they're getting down deep into the carpet and they're lifting all that stuff up, but really what's happening is you're stifling the airflow, so... The airflow is not able to get under the vacuum and be able to lift, you know, because it uses suction to pick debris up off the carpet and dump it into the bag. So when you staple the airflow, you're not able to pick stuff up out of the carpet. You're just beating it with a beater bar and bouncing everything around, but you're not really picking anything up. Um, granted, it is picking up and scooping up stuff with the beater bar, but the, the, the suction is not being used efficiently, so it's leaving a lot of stuff in the carpet. So, um, what I'm going to kind of give you a quick preview here. I'm going to go ahead and turn this guy on. It's going to get a little bit loud, and I'll uh, try to talk over it here to explain. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set our vacuum into the highest position and it is right now so we're going to go ahead and turn it on and then what we're going to do is we're going to begin lowering our vacuum until we hear and make an audible contact with the beater bar on the carpet so we're going to give it one click two clicks that you just heard it in it and then the optimal setting is to go down one more click. And that right there is our sweet spot that we're going to be using to vacuum the carpet. And one thing if you notice, as this vacuum is going along, it's very gently, you can sort of see the carpet rising and falling. I mean, it's actually picking up the carpet fibers a little bit off the carpet and it's beating it with that, uh, off. So what it's doing, it's actually lifting up on the carpets gently with that beater bar and the suction and it's rattling and causing like a mini earthquake inside the, the carpet themselves and it's bouncing all that debris around. And because we have it set at our sweet spot, it's still able to get plenty of air circulating under there to create the, the, the suction that it needs. Um, that's what the vacuum <laughs> the vacuum portion of it creates that 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 um, negative pressure in there that causes air to to rush in. Let's you know, I won't try to get too much into the physics there, but that's essentially what's happening is that we are creating an airflow, and that airflow then is picking up all of the debris um, that is being vibrated and bounced around by the beater bar. So. When you got the beater bar down too low, you're bouncing stuff around, but then you don't have any airflow to actually cause a suction to pick the stuff up. So in that sense, you're kind of stifling and killing it. Um, so it, you got several things that need to be in play to actually get it to perform properly. So um, get that beater bar adjustment height set properly and there shouldn't be any problems. So. Um, commercial vacuum cleaners, pretty much all of them have a height adjustment. Every carpet is different. You go in, you put up the highest spot point in the carpet, you start dropping it down, click, click, 
oh, I just heard it hit the carpet because the sound changed. And then you click it down one more, and that's where you want to be at. Hey, so I'm going through. I've got this other vacuum that I use for stairways and furniture and that sort of stuff. A little hand vac. It's got a beater bar under there. You can see it works fairly okay. As you can see, we've gone through about half the stairway here, and it's accumulated quite a bit of debris. So, um, kind of let that be a telltale sign to you whether or not you think that carpet should be vacuumed or not. Um, we could just go ahead and steam clean it and all that stuff would just turn to mud and it may or may not come out of the carpets. Um, however, you know, with this particular unit, and this is pretty much the way that all little hand vacs with beater bars are nowadays, um, this is pretty much a dirt devil. This particular model got on Amazon, it was really cheap. But I believe that they're discontinued. I don't think you can find them anymore. But it's pretty much identical to the uh, the Dirt Devil. In fact, um, this is a Royal. And I believe that Royal owns Dirt Devil. So they're the exact same unit. This one is just colored differently. Um, so you can pick them up. I think they're about $30. $30, $40 range or something like that. Right in there. And they work good. However, they do have a, uh, you know, like I was talking about airflow and all that. These do not, these are pretty poor when it comes to uh, creating airflow. So what ends up happening is that you cause it to overheat because there's not enough air going through and keeping the motor cool. So you'll get about halfway through your run of stairs and then the unit will overheat and then you'll just have to let it sit for, you know, a good 10 minutes just for it to cool off and then you can continue on with your vacuuming so that's kind of what we're doing now um, plus this is kind of a good um, time to go through and empty out all that nasty stuff that we pulled out of there um, I do know that Royal in the 70s they had a hand vac um, I believe it had a bag on it but it was one of those reusable bags so you know it was H HEPA whatever blah 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 um, so it it worked very good, it, and when you filled it up, you just dumped it out, and then you hooked it back up to the machine and, and started away. Um, however, the vacuum cleaner was solid metal parts and everything, so it was high powered. Probably a seven. I don't know how to seven amp motor. You know, a seven amp motor is what your Kirby has in it, and I don't know what it would have as far as a motor inside of it, but it would be, you know, pretty powerful. Um, and it probably wouldn't overheat like this. However, I'm not sure the airflow and everything. I've talked to some vacuum cleaner guys and they said, well, unfortunately, the technology today is better than what it was in the past. However, it's a lot cheaper and designed to be thrown away. So as a consumer, as for consumer products, you know, it's like use and breaks, throw it away and buy another one. Um, I do know that you can get a Royal Prince off of eBay for like 20 or 30 bucks when you see them. Um, I've seen them for that price. And I should have bought one, you know, up right away when I saw it just so that I, I could have it to use, at least compare it to this. Um, this uh, particular product, Dirt Double, it works fairly okay. But like I said, you have to to use it properly to get as much debris out of the carpet. You, know, you can see all that stuff in there again. To get as much of that nasty stuff out of there as possible, you are pretty much stifling a lot of the airflow that is actually used to cool the machine off. So, um, yeah, so it's it's got its pros and its cons. And I'd say in this case, it's, it's kind of hard to say which is which. Um, for now, I'd say this is better than nothing. So, um, it does a pretty good job. So make sure you guys do your pre-vacuums because it pays off big time when it comes to uh, the results that you're able to produce with your your cleaning. Okay, so I went over the stairways again, and um, what I wanted to do, I want way more than what I probably needed should have done or whatever but i wanted to drive home the point that uh you see that thing right there the canister is just absolutely filthy with dirt and debris and all kinds of stuff 
um, we went over it again a second time and I pulled all that stuff out. So, as you can see, you know, um, you can do a cheap carpet cleaning and bypass all that stuff and just leave it in the carpets and hope that your powerful torque mounted steam cleaning is going to pull that all out. Or you can take a professional effort to uh, use a vacuum cleaner and pull uh, stuff up and out so that you actually have better results. Now think about your pre-spray going down into all that dirt and, and stuff. Um, what do you think is going to have more uh, effect now if I pre-spray the carpets with all that junk in there or if I pre-spray the carpets without all that junk in there? Um, that's just something to think about. And so for right now we're going to go ahead and put this away and we are going to go upstairs and um, we got a bunch of this candy sort of stuff that we're going to work on melting out of the carpet using our Black & Decker Steamworks. Um, for you guys who haven't seen that, you're going to be in for a treat because it's a really cool tool. And what we're going to be using is, um, well, I got two sprayers there. The one bottle has my, uh, is a pog and it has my, uh, my trigger sprayer on it. But the red one there to the left is the one that we're going to be using and that is a red out. So... Um, typically with candy and gum like that, you can just pretty much steam it out and use a terry cloth towel, or in this case, we're just going to be using a, uh, yeah, a terry cloth towel on that scrub brush there, and we're just kind of, kind of brush that stuff out of the carpet and get it up and out of there, um, before we do our clean, so we're not having to go back over our damp carpets and doing this, and then I did notice a couple of red spots upstairs that we will hit up as well, so, uh, Stay tuned and you'll be able to see some pretty cool specialty spot remover. All right, you guys, so what this is, this is our Black & Decker Steamworks. And it is an old, uh, I believe it's a 1980s, like an 89 or 88 or something like that, wallpaper stripper. Now the Amco, I believe it is, has a unit that is like this. Um, it sells, it retails for about 160 bucks. 145 to 160. Um, it is a little bit, it's quite a bit more spendy. Um, this one, unfortunately for you uh, guys in foreign countries who are doing the carpet cleaning, um, like Canada and Europe and stuff, um, the, the US eBay is quite a bit more saturated with this, this sort of stuff. Um, so it'll be a lot more difficult for you guys to find. But this I actually picked up for uh, like 22 bucks. And um, it's used, it's old, but it, it works very well. And what it does, you can see that there's steam coming out of it. So this reservoir container fills up with water, and it's just pushing steam down onto the carpet. So unlike your uh, standard, typical iron that a lot of guys use. All right, so as I was saying, like uh, unlike a uh, typical standard iron, that clothes iron that people use to... Uh, heat up and pull stuff out of the carpeting which works as well you got to keep a good close eye on it so that you're not melting fibers or burning the carpets this is just putting down hot steam so um it's it's safe for your carpets it's not going to cause any melting or damage and so right now like that is actually down on a piece of candy and we'll go ahead and pull it up and then we can pick up any residue with this and then any sugar residues and things that are on the carpet will be cleaned free with our uh, cleaning pre-spray as we do our steam cleaning later. So as you can see it's kind of a nasty green spot there and yeah it's just it's all gooey and it, it'll just rub out of the carpet. You can see it's coming out with a towel but I'm not too uh, dexterous with my uh, my left hand so can't really record and pull that stuff out but you can see that it it does a pretty good job so that's what we're doing is we're just melting it down and getting that goo goop out of there transferring it into the towel and then as we do our regular cleaning we'll pick up any residue or whatever left behind by all that sugar or whatnot whatever it might be you know the kids play with slime and all that homemade stuff which is basically elmer's glue and this gets it out the exact same way um, there are different techniques you can use. You can even use like this, soften it up and get it kind of pliable. And then you can use like a brush like this or a little tampering brush or something and you can roll that stuff up out of the carpet and roll it into like a little ball and it comes out pretty easily. 
And then we are going to go into the other room with our red one. And there, I know that there are a couple of little red spots. We'll pre-treat. We'll let it sit there for a little bit. And then we will uh, take this Black & Decker Steamworks because heat accelerates chemical reactions. So if that is needed, we will go ahead and do that as well. But as you can see in the doorway here, there were two uh, pieces of candy that were stuck on the carpet and they are both out. And right here we have moved to another piece. We're pulling that out right now. And we got another piece there and another piece over there. And I saw another piece on the stairways that we will get that one later as well. All right, so um, just kind of going back over this area to show you some final results here. Well, not final because we haven't cleaned. But you can see we melted that candy stuff right on out of the carpets. Um, you can see the spots are pretty wet where we were working just because of all the steam that was being pushed in the carpet. Breaking that candy stuff down, melting it out. And at that point, it pretty much obliterates all of the... The nasty, well, it's still on the carpet, so it just broke it down and dissolved it all. And then we will rinse it out with our steam cleaning with the sugars and everything that we pretty much broke down. So we took it from a solid substance, we pretty much broke it down, and now it's just, just residue that's in the carpet. So no different than like a soda spill or something. So um, we pretty much got all that stuff out because that's what candy is, it's corn, starch, and sugar. So you melt it down, break it down, get the solids all solidified and broken up, and it all comes right out of the carpet. And in the bedroom here we had a red spot. Um, this has been on there for about uh, a couple minutes, two minutes maybe. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got here. You can see that nasty red, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and use this terry cloth towel and rub that, that spot out of there as well. Okay, so that red spot was actually a little bit more challenging because other than just candy and sugar or whatever it was in there, it also had a lot of red dye. So what we're doing is we use our red one by Pro's Choice. Very good at getting synthetic colors, um, especially red and Kool-Aid. That's what it's designed for out of the carpets. And so we're going to let this sit for a couple, about a minute or so, and then we will see what we've got done here. And as you can see, um, it seemed to do a pretty good job. Now again, what's happening is we're putting heat on this, um, the chemical here, the red one, and what it does is it excites the molecules, it gets them bouncing around, and it causes that chemical reaction to, to occur faster than of what it otherwise would have been. So what happens is you put this down and as it evaporates it starts to pull the stain out. However, we're putting steam down there and we're causing some super evaporation, especially with the heat, and it draws that stain right out. So what we're going to do is um, I can slightly see a little tiny bit of coloring in there, so I'm just going to post treat it and let the rest of it work naturally as we go ahead and begin our uh, pre-spray process and getting this place all conditioned and ready for a steam cleaning. And the little blue spot of candy was right there. And as you can see, we have, you know, thrashed our little terry hotel with all the, the, the nasty gooey debris and residue that we all pulled out of the carpeting. Um, now that concludes our specialty stain remover using our Steamworks for now. Um, we're doing a pet premium sort of clean package that includes um, a number of specialty stain removers. So this is included with the package. So that's something you guys can think about is when you're selling your, your product, you know, to um, include a package that includes, you know, a certain number of, you know, specialty stain remover removals, whether it be candle wax or whatever. So rather than just itemizing everything and coming across as, you know, nickel and dime and everything, um, include a couple things to make it appear that they're getting more value or feel that they're getting more value in what you're providing your customer base. And that usually helps you to sell and upsell your, your cleaning packages at that point when the customer can actually see... Um, perceive the value that you're providing so um, perceivable value make sure that you include that in your 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 what you're selling because that's what uh, 
That's what marketing is all based upon, is perceived value. All right, so what I'm going to do is move into phase two. We're going to begin our pre-spray process using our uh, peroxide-based cleaning solution. It's sodium carbonate master blend product called Soap Free. And as it's suggested, there it contains no soap. So when it comes to residual um, soap residue and things like that being left behind in the carpeting, this is an excellent product because it does not leave anything behind in the carpeting. So we are going to neutralize, sanitize, and get everything all cleaned up because uh, peroxide is awesome at doing all that stuff. It also it actively works as an oxidizer and helps to get out spots and stuff. However, we don't. We're not dealing with anything like that. We're just sanitizing the carpets and getting them all nice and cleaned up. Now, um, for those of you who may have been following some of my other videos, you know that I use a, an electric multi-sprayer. Um, this draws uh, a <laughs> pretty good point that um, you should always have a redundant backup of some sort in your, your van and your arsenal of tools. Um, the, the pump or whatever, it's not priming it's not spraying I don't know why but I do have this uh, garden sprayer pump up sprayer it's like a two gallon a gallon and a half or whatever so we can make up our solution all the same and just put it into here and apply it and it works all the same as if we were using our multi sprayer especially in this sort of condition it's not so bad where I do like the multi sprayers when you're in areas that are limited on uh, lengths of where you're you're running cords and things like that where you can just put it down and cover an entire big area without having to readjust anything so in small quarters there's no problem using this i just don't like all the, the pump 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 and spray and having to continually do that all the entire job um however you could probably get away with pumping it up once per room so it's not going to be that bad and then we have our CRB out here. Now, um, I put our collection plate reservoirs in the back so that um, anything, the hair, nasty stuff, that, nasty stuff that we pick up will collect in the reservoirs. And then taking it, the reservoir off the front allows us to get close to the wall without banging into them or without leaving like a, those reservoirs are maybe three inches wide. So... You would, otherwise, you'd have to leave like a three inch gap or turn and go as close to the wall as you can sideways, which is a little bit more risky than if you were to go head on because in head on you can see exactly what you're doing. So um, I like I prefer taking them off and doing it this way unless I'm doing like specific animal hair removal and then I'll put both trays on and then I'm just grooming for animal hair at that point. Um, so that goes back to the vacuum cleaner versus the uh, CRB and what you should be doing if you're working on pulling matted stuff up out of the carpeting like hair. Definitely run a CRB. I mean, the CRB outperforms a vacuum cleaner all day long. But when it comes to that fine abrasive debris, sand, dirt, and stuff like that that's in the carpeting, um, CRB is pretty much worthless in that situation. So we... In conditions in scenarios like this where we're doing it like a pet premium sort of thing where the, there is not necessarily um, a lot of you know pet stuff that we're dealing with because I don't think there probably is none but there is residue and debris and probably lint and stuff in the carpeting that we are removing so pet premium is more of a suggestion to the customer as to what product they should identify with when they are selecting a product so when they hear pet premium hey i've got kids that act like animals or i have a pet uh, the pet premium just is a is a package cleaning package that they can identify with at that particular point so when you're comparing a pet premium with a straight clean or something like that um, the name suggests that you're getting a whole lot more just from the pet premium and then they can go down the list and see what the package actually includes and then they will see yes the pet premium does contain a whole lot more value than what the straight clean contains um, as far as mechanical agitation versus manual agitation um, it does take time to uh, set this guy up and get him running um, this is a Pretty much pretty close to a three thousand dollar unit compared to a grinded groom for thirty bucks. Um, so 
<laughs> you're you're getting your 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 uh dollars worth out of the, the cleaning for sure so and that aspect um i always try to prevent value to the the customer when they're looking at having their their carpets cleaned okay in the hallway here where the candy was i do run our crb over in a couple different directions just to make sure that we obliterate all that sugar residue as we possibly can and get it up out of there it looks like um i don't see any spots or anything so it looks like i did a really good job now granted this is only phase two of our three phase cleaning system um i try to simplify it as much as possible by keeping it down to three three phases a lot of people advertise hey, our 12 step process and blah 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 and really they're just counting every single little detail that they do i mean if they say that they're pre-examining the carpets which i do during my my pre-vacuum which i call phase one they're calling that a step and then they're they call their vacuum if they do a vacuum a step and then they'll call um pre-treating stuff another step which is for me as part of phase two so by the time they get done they have 12 steps that all fit into my three steps so um keep it simple easy um probably could have hit this up a little bit heavier on that spot and that there but with our steam clean it's just going to come out anyway so as you can see it did a really good job of just agitating and get these carpets cleaned now with the mechanical agitation of that crb those brushes that are under there are um grooming gently lifting up on the carpet piling and it's turning at roughly 668 or 660 rpms per minute or turns per minute i mean rpm includes minutes so um as you can see that is a lot more thorough than going over with a broom and brooming it like um, most of the typical carpet cleaning does if they do any agitation they're usually they're using a broom so you can go over it with a broom or you can go over it 668 times with some brushes and tell me which one is going to be better $30 broom $3,000 CRB yeah so there is so we're just going to go through this room sorry I'm just um, kind of going off on autopilot here and not even thinking about what we're doing. So um, we got this section, we got that room, and then we'll go ahead and continue doing it room by room until we get it all clean. Now the reason I do it room by room, one, is because we're using the stupid pump-up sprayer, and two, it allows us to make sure that everything is thoroughly addressed as we go along. Okay, let's do a little bit of before and after comparison. This is before CRB, and then I've you can see that there's some gunk in here and I'm going to move that chair out of the way once we get this back corner cleaned up and then clean that up there and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at the results that our phase two is able to accomplish now um and here there was quite a bit of debris matted in the carpet and we got all that out and the carpets look a lot cleaner and brighter now than they did before um I'll try to get a side-by-side -side comparison in the video but uh, as you can see, you know, you can go back and look at the other video and see how dark it was compared to how light it looks right now. Okay, you guys, here's the after result of the CRB. As you can see, it did a, a pretty phenomenal job. Get all that nast and stuff out of here. Um, now, I believe it's Photoshop has a product called After Effects, but uh, this here is the After Effects results without any Photoshop. Unlike NASA, who uses Photoshop to produce absolutely every single star, every single galaxy, every single planet, every single everything, even the Earth is all Photoshopped. So uh, Photoshop is kind of cool because you can uh, trick people into thinking anything you want. Um, came through here, and as you can see, we were able... Um, the tray isn't completely full, I'm not dumping it out up here, but um, you can see that it pulled out a pretty decent amount of uh, lint and debris from the carpeting, and that is why they appear much brighter now than they did recently, just because we got a lot of that, that dinge and that nast out of the carpeting. That builds up over time, and then pretty soon, you're like, oh, my carpets are dirty, they need to be cleaned. 
And like I've said before, that's kind of a bad way to go about whether or not your carpets are needing to be cleaned or not. Because um, one thing, um, I've called up customers, you know, 8 months, 12 months out to do a referral clean. You know, to follow up, see how things are doing and, and reschedule if they need a new clean. And they say, oh no, the carpets are still clean. Um, this does keep them cleaner, brighter, softer, longer than in anything else doing this, this process. Um, however, it's the accumulation of debris that's in your carpet that actually causes the damage. So unless you have a super high-powered vacuum and you're vacuuming all the time, your carpets really should be um, professionally serviced every about every 10 to 12 months. And what that does is that keeps that debris accumulation in your carpeting down. So that is the... Um, importance of a professional carpet cleaner vacuuming your carpet. If they do not vacuum your carpet, I would hang up and call the next company and ask if they vacuum carpets. Because um, a high-powered uh, vacuum cleaner is critical, it's crucial, and it will cause your carpets to um, remain uh, in you know, a higher degree of, um, I, I call it, uh, I don't know what I call it, I, I call it a, a, a usable, healthy condition, you know, because um, you, you get to the point where they're so worn out because they've been neglected and then they just have to be replaced. So I say maintain your investment and keep them looking awesome as much as possible. Now, I, I have to put in a caveat. These are uh, nylon carpets. If you are have a condition where you have an apartment with cheap polyester carpeting, you are not going to experience these results. I mean, we had a big red stain there. It came completely out. It looks really good. Um, but, and all the candy came out. However, when you're dealing with polyester carpeting, it's kind of a crapshoot because you don't know what's going to happen. They'll look better, but if they're worn and down and, and dingy, um, you can get some of the dirt out, but they're still going to look nasty forever until they're replaced. So, if you got polyester carpets, my suggestion is just to have them cleaned routinely. And more so than a uh, typical residential, I would probably look at every six to eight months or more if you're wanting to uh, pro prolong that carpeting. In fact, um, a lot of carpet cleaners in that case... I may consider like some more inexpensive sort of cleaning. Like if you have like a one bedroom apartment, I suppose like a $79 cleaning will probably um, be all right. You know, and even if they're not using chemical, they're just going through with, with, with their steam, like 50 bucks or whatever, you're going to be in a lot better condition, getting a lot more of that debris out of the carpets and letting it build up over time because it's that continual walking on and friction and stretching and rubbing and all that stuff in the carpeting that is damaging those fibers. So uh, you keep your carpeting in a condition where the fibers can't be damaged and then they will last longer. Okay, you guys, we're all set up at the van. Moving on to phase three, the steam cleaning. And uh, what I do to make sure that we always have the perfect amount of hose running into the house, um, make sure that you uh, use your guards, you guys, so you're not damaging anything. That was from the last pepper cleaner. That wasn't for me. So we come up. You can see I've got guards placed at all the spots. Um, what I am going to do, once I get done here, I got this stair hook. I'm going to tie this hose off so it's not sliding down the stairs as we're working. And so what I do to make sure that we always have the perfect amount of hose, you see this blue hose here. It's about a 50 foot section. And so what I do is I always break this piece off of the truck and I bring it into the house. I bring it to the furthermost point of the house. I hook it in, have it ready to go. Bam, there it is. And then we walk it out the door. Um, what that does is it keeps our hoses nice and clean inside the house and so we're not bringing in debris. Plus it also makes sure that we know exactly how much hose that we're using every single time. So when a 50 doesn't reach all the way out to the door, some cases it does, in most cases it doesn't. We just go ahead and we grab another piece of hose and we go ahead and hook it in um, our solution line. A little bit longer, but it's lighter. Not as big as a deal. Um, this is a pretty heavy braided 
Oh, so even at 230 degrees, I've never had issues with it ever burning grass or doing anything. Um, just because the braiding is so thick on it. Um, it's unlike those other hoses that you John Don, cheap John Don hoses you get that uh, will burst on you while you're working. This thing won't burst. Um, an indicator is that the uh, the plastic lining on the outside will start breaking off, revealing the 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 inner the inner hose. I do have a couple sections like that that I take back up until the whole thing just needs to be thrown out and replaced. Um, I keep using this one because it works absolutely fine. This one doesn't have any breaks in it, but I do have a, a couple of other shorter runs, about 15 and 20 footers, that are that are older. I pick up, you know, used stuff off of trucks or whatever for, you know, a fraction of what they cost new, and just run them out for a couple of years or until I can't use them anymore, and then replace them. So, you know, I try to save money in the long run by doing it that way, and. The hose is not a wow factor that's going to impress anybody anyways, so um, you can spend a whole lot of money and get some really cool color coordinated hoses and no one's going to give a crap about it. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and begin our steam cleaning process now. In the bedroom, back here, working our way out, we'll do these back bedrooms here and then finish up the back over there and then... We'll attach our stair tool here and go ahead and go down the stairs. Now we did uh, the exact same process with the stairways as we did with everything else. And uh, what I gotta say is we went ahead, we put our pre-spray solution, then we used our brush and we brushed the stairs. And I've gotta say, you guys, um, with the pre-vacuum and everything that I do, um, it doesn't matter who has cleaned the carpets before me, I always clean a lot more debris out of the carpet so I do know that your pre-vacuum is very critical and crucial to what you're doing um you know name a carpet cleaning company I've cleaned after I've cleaned after Sears I've cleaned after Zero Res I've cleaned after Chem Dry uh, Heaven's Best I've cleaned up after all of them um and the debris the amounts of debris that I pull up out of the carping afterwards is usually always generally the same so they are not doing a thorough vacuuming and they are not doing a thorough cleaning um, take a look at Kim Dry and Heaven's Best with the low moisture cleaning um, and I wonder if that debris is even coming out of the carpet so I mean it's cool that you're obliterating the, the residues and stuff that's in there but what about all that debris that's scratching the carpet fibers? I apologize if I already went over that. Anyways, we did this. We cleaned this couch up. Got any uh, sticky tacky stuff off of it. Yogurt or whatever the kids are, might eat on the couch. It wasn't bad. But it looks a lot better now. And this airy rug down here on the floor. Um, I think it, I believe it's a synthetic of some sort. But, um... I can't really get to it, so flip it over to see what the tag is. I think it's over there in the corner. 
but um, by feel it is pretty thick so I'm not sure if it's a thin synthetic it might be a synthetic blend with uh, some cotton or something in there just because of how thick it is um, but we are going to use a fiber safe uh, cleaning product anyways to clean it all up so what I did is I went ahead and I pre-sprayed this let it dwell a little bit now we're going to evacuate it or <laughs> extract it and then we're going to evacuate it and then that will uh, finish us up for today here yeah, I want to thank you for uh, watching today's video there are all the couch cushions there I hope that you're able to take a nugget or two out of this and if you have any comments or questions be sure to leave them in the comment space below and for those of you looking for an entertaining uh, carpet cleaning video I'm sorry that this is not entertaining this is uh, more like education as far as me explaining my experience and trying to help other guys out who are trying to learn as well um because i learn by watching youtube videos and other people in the field and now i'm trying to pass it along to help other guys do exactly the same thing